hello and welcome to biologic official and today my class is all about these animals that is vertebrates or phylum chordata yeah i know there are two invertebrates on this t-shirt like butterflies and beetles but please ignore them for today's class students do attentively watch the video till the end phylum chordata is characterized by three characters number one presence of nerve cord number two presence of notochord and number three presence of pharyngeal gill slits so the first character is the presence of single dorsal hollow tubular nerve cord each and every adjective is very much important and number two presence of dorsal notochord and number three presence of pharyngeal gill slits in any point of their life. There are a few more characteristics but these three characteristics are most important in case of phylum chordata. So next classification of the phylum chordata. So first of all let me draw the classification tree. So the tree starts with the phylum chordata. Phylum chordata is divided into four subphyla: hemichordata, urochordata, cephalochordata, and vertebrata. Vertebrata is again subdivided into two superclasses: agnatha or anatha and nathostomata. Sub superclass nathostomata is divided into six classes: chondrichthys, osteichthys, amphibia. Reptilia, Avis, and Mammalia. Today in this class, I will discuss about four subphyla and two superclasses. So first subphylum, Hemichordata. Their body is soft and unsegmented. Body typically divided into three distinct regions like head, collar, and trunk. The animals are ciliary filter feeders, nervous system primitive type, and it mainly consists of subepidermal nerve plexus. Presence of buccal tube or stomochord. Notochord absent, but nerve cord and pharyngeal gill slits are present. The larval form is called tornaria larva and they are very much similar to the bipinaria larva of echinoderms. Due to the last two characters, some authors place them with invertebrates rather than chordates or vertebrates. The examples include balanoglossus, sacoglossus, etc. Next subphylum, urochordata. Euro means tail. So in this case, notochord is well developed in the tail region. That's why the name Eurochordata. The body of adults is sac-like and they are mostly sedentary. Their body is covered by tunic or taste which is composed of tunicine and that's why this subphylum is called tunicata. Presence of specialized cells called vanadocytes which extract vanadium from seawater. Retrogressive metamorphosis can be seen in their life cycle. Notochord is present only in the larval tail. That means their larval form is more developed than adults. The examples include doliolum, acidia, etc. Next subphylum, cephalochordata. So cephalic regions mean head region. So in this case, notochord is well developed in the cephalic region. That's why the name cephalochordata. Mostly sedentary and burrowing in nature, body is small and slender. Notochord is rod-like and persistent throughout life. As I said before, notochord is extended to the anterior part of the body, even beyond the nerve cord. That's why the name cephalochordata. Excretion through protonephridia. The example is branchiostoma. So next, last subphylum, vertebrata. In case of vertebrates, notochord is replaced by vertebral column and their brain is covered by cranium. Subphylum vertebrata is divided into superclass agnatha and nathostomata. Vertebrates without functional jaw come under agnatha or anatha and vertebrates with jaws are called nathostomes. Animals under agnatha are without jaws and they lack paired limbs. The examples include lamprey and hackfish. If you have any query regarding this topic, please feel free to leave your comment below. 
So that's all from today. See you in my next vlog of this classification series.